Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com. If you're looking for a new Android phone, you're undoubtedly looking at the Nexus 4 and the Droid DNA. And in this video, we're going to compare them both. Let's get to it. Okay, so we're going to talk about the hardware on both of these devices and then compare them. But first, let's take the DNA. Now, the DNA is on Verizon right now over LTE, although you can put an AT&T SIM card in it and get HSPA plus data speeds. In fact, that's what I've been running on, and it works just fine over AT&T, which is really interesting, actually. This phone's going to be released within the next six months on every major carrier and in Europe, because this is HTC's thang for the next six months. This is their high-end phone, and the DNA, the deluxe, whatever you want to call it, is deserving of that title. This thing's a beast, and it's it's truly unique in the, in the fact that it has a 1080p screen. It's the first smartphone with a 1080p. It's got the S4 Pro quad-core, so it's fast, and we're going to get to that in a minute. But let's take a look at this design, what Verizon and HTC has done here. We've got these red elements all throughout. We've got the speaker grill up here, which has this interested interesting perforated look to it behind the grill. Uh, we've got a massive front-facing camera. It's not super high resolution or anything. It's got a wide angle, but it just looks huge compared to other front-facing cameras. We've got this tapered edge look, kind of a, a common design language that a lot of manufacturers are using. We've got capacitive buttons on the bottom and Gorilla Glass too, so it's a little bit more slippery than the last generation Gorilla Glass. Around the edges, we've got these really awesome details, the Verizon Red, and it looks like there's a speaker behind here because they're perforated metal panels, but actually it's just for design. On the top, the power button's interestingly placed in the top center, which is definitely annoying. They should have placed it on the side. HTC usually places it right here, but that's where the SIM tray is. And the power button has this awesome design to it. If you move it in the light, it's got this radial cutout design, which is carried over to the volume rocker here. Not just a standard piece of plastic for the volume rocker. You get this nice little etched look to it. The red accent continues on the sides on the back to the camera. Now the back has soft touch plastic, which is really important for this phone because it's tall. Uh, it's not a phablet uh, because it's not intended to take the place of a tablet like the Note 2 might, for example. It's very much a phone. It's a long bar phone. And so having soft touch on the back makes it feel really nice in hand. It really feels secure. And the fact that these tapered edges come to the end here makes the phone feel a lot thinner than it is. It's actually thicker than the Nexus 4, uh, but it feels thinner because of this nice sharp edge here, which is probably about six millimeters thick, but then the entire phone, if you look at it from the side, is 9.7 millimeters thick. So that is the Droid DNA, really nice design, something new and fresh, which is nice to see. Here on the Nexus 4, designed by LG, it shares design language with the Optimus G, of course. We have a buttonless design here, uh, and we've got a nice bezel on the bottom which you can use to hold the phone uh, from. We've got an LED notification light, and should mention that the uh, Droid DNA here has a notification light here on the front and also here on the back. The Nexus 4 actually is a multicolor notification LED, which can show a ton of different colors if you use light flow. Uh, so far, it looks like the DNA only has green and yellow and, and red, really, and not like blue and amber and all those other colors that you can do on the Nexus 4. Uh, the Nexus 4 is a little bit thinner than the Droid DNA, but it feels a little bit thicker because the edge is the same thickness as the entire phone, so it kind of goes all the way back. Uh, we've got a really cool design element here on the Nexus 4, something totally unique, just, this, just thousands of little circles that shimmer in the light when you twist it. Let me bring the light a little bit closer and you can kind of see, ooh, that's fun. Very nice. And we've got soft touch around the edges here. Uh, and it feels okay in the hand. It doesn't feel as good as the Droid DNA, uh, perhaps because this plastic has an interesting contrast with all of this glass. It makes it feel a little bit cheap, like the edges should have been a higher quality material, maybe metal, for example. Whereas on the Droid DNA, you get glass and the rest is just soft touch plastic, so it feels nice in the hand. Another thing about the Nexus 4 is that it slides so easily. The Droid DNA, swivels easily, uh, but because it's rubbery on the back, it's going to stay in your pocket more easily and it's not going to jump off of a table uh, like you might see with the Nexus 4. Now the screens are very different and yet they're not that different in terms of size. We have a 5-inch 
1080p, that's 1920 by 1080, making for a pixel density of 440. That's huge. Uh, here on the Nexus 4, we have a more reasonable 4.7 inch display, uh, 1280 down by 768 across, still a high PPI of 320. Uh, now, because of the bigger screen here, the, uh, the Droid DNA is a little bit a little bit wider, it's significantly taller there by about an inch. And of course, as mentioned with thickness, the Droid DNA is, is a little bit thicker. If we put it on a table, it's 9.7 millimeters versus 9.1 millimeters. All right, now let's turn on these guys. And while they're turning on, we're gonna talk about specs. So we turn them on over here and here. Let's see which turns on faster. Go. And they're both starting up. So both of these devices have very similar specifications. We both, they both share the Qualcomm S4 Pro quad core. Wow, looks like we were first here on the Droid DNA. And to continue the thought here, we've got the S4 Pro quad core Snapdragon on both devices. They both have two gigabytes of RAM and they both have similar storage situations. So on the Droid DNA, we have your choice of 16 gigabytes and 16 gigabytes. You don't have any other choice. On the Nexus 4, you get either eight or 16 gigabytes. Uh, neither device has expandable storage, so choose your storage wisely. Now, of course, when you get 16 gigabytes of storage, you don't actually get 16 gigabytes of storage. On the Droid DNA, your 16 gigabytes of storage means 11 gigabytes usable. And here on the Nexus 4, eight gigabytes gives you about six usable and 16 gig gigabytes gives you about 14 usable. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. You're gonna get a little extra space here if you go with the 16 gigabyte model. Now what we're gonna do is test app launch speed and then we're gonna compare the screens. We're gonna do benchmarks. You're definitely gonna wanna stick around. First thing I wanna do here is actually turn on brightness all the way so that you can tell the difference between the screens, see which one is more bright perhaps. We'll go to brightness, turn off auto brightness, jack that bad boy up. We've got a Super LCD 3 screen here, kind of the successor to the LCD Super LCD 2 of the One X. And we've got LG's IPS display here. Both of these displays are awesome. Actually, let's take a look at viewing angles. So we're gonna turn both of them to the side at the same degree. And you can kind of be the judge. Both of them have really, I mean, you can still see the screens. It's pretty incredible. Both of them have extremely good viewing angles. Uh, and we're gonna see what the 1080p resolution means in a wide variety of cases. Okay, let's test app launch speed. We're gonna start off with Facebook here. We're both over the same Wi-Fi network, one, two, three. And by the way, something to note here, look at the Facebook icon here on the DNA uh, versus the Nexus 4. It's more blue, more saturated on the DNA, as you can see there, compared to the Nexus 4. So just pointing out some things along the way here. Let's launch Facebook, one, two, three, go. Faster on the Nexus 4. Let's launch Twitter. So go back into social folder, one, two, three, Twitter. Faster on the Nexus 4. Next thing we're going to do is launch the Play Store. One, two, three, Play Store. About the same there. Next thing we are going to do is launch Bad Piggies. If we can find it, Bad Piggies HD to be exact, go. Wow, exactly at the same time. Now what you're dealing with here is obviously similar hardware. Uh, so what you're gonna get is the Joy DNA being a little bit slower most of the time just because it has so many more pixels than the Nexus 4. Uh, another thing we're gonna launch now is the camera. Down here, one, two, three, say cheese. Exactly the same time. Let's do that again. The camera's always weird. The first load takes a little bit longer. One, two, three, camera. Okay, interesting. Now that we have the same amount of programs in memory, let's check free RAM. Let's see how both of these devices do in terms of RAM utilization. So we're gonna go to apps here, running and running and... So we've got 1.5 gigabytes usable instead of two, and we're using about 885 of it. And down here, uh, we're using far less RAM, which is really interesting. Have the same 1.5 gigabytes free. HTC Sense, man, just takes up a lot of RAM, and that's probably what's happening here. We have about 50% RAM available here, and we've got like 75% available on the Nexus 4. One of the benefits of having stock Android on the Nexus 4 is that you don't have to worry about Sense or TouchWiz or whatever interface you're thinking about uh, to slow you down. 
These also have different multitask UIs. So we're gonna hit this button and see which opens the multitask UI first. One, two, three, multitask. That was about at the same time. HTC, HTC is still going with their really 3D-esque multitask UI. Uh, we kind of wish HTC would just go with the stock Android multitask UI. If it's not fixed, if it's not, what is that? If it's not broken, don't fix it. All right, so in terms of app launch speed, the Nexus 4 is the winner there. Next, we're going to go into the web. Now, in our review, we complain that the Nexus 4 is Chrome built in as the stock browser, and we still feel that way. Uh, the stock Android browser is faster than Chrome, period, in every case. So it'll be interesting to see how these two devices compare. What we're going to do is launch Pocket now right off the bat. We've got some tabs open, I'm just going to close those. All right, and the DNA went to the mobile site. Let's go to the desktop version. Really curious to see how the display difference, really curious to see how the display differs here because we get so many more pixels on the DNA. And look at this, uh, here on the Nexus 4, we can see down to this story here. And that's where this story is here. So we get an additional almost two stories here on the DNA. Another thing that's really striking about the DNA is from this zoomed out view, you can read this text more than ever. Let me show you. You can still do it on the Nexus 4, uh, but you're, you're getting to the limit of the screen's ability to show you really small text. So can you read that text? Probably. Uh, but on the DNA, it's, it's, another, it's in another realm. Okay, so let's test out pinch to zoom. Okay, we're going to pinch to zoom. And did you notice that if I pinch the exact same amount on the Nexus 4, I zoom in less. The screen sensitivity is, is worse on the Nexus 4. It's, it's, it's got a problem because of this in-cell touch. So watch me pinch the same amount. I'm actually, I'm actually pinch, I've actually pinched more on the Nexus 4, and it's just not as responsive. So let's zoom back out. We're going to double tap to zoom in, see which clears up faster. About equal there. And let's zoom back out to move down the page, see if we get any white space. Very smooth there. Very smooth there as well. Okay, so let's move on around the page, pick a story. Let's pick this one here. And we are going to click on that. One, two, three, go. The exact same time. Let's see which gets there first. We're watching the progress bar and the progress bar. And... And... DNA finish first. We're going to stop the Nexus 4 here. Okay, we've got a little pop up here. We don't want that. And we're going to scroll down to this embedded video, see which renders it faster. One, two, three, go. Faster on the Nexus 4. Okay, so let's go back to the home screen. Let's go to another website. This time we are going to go to The Verge. One, two, three, go. We're getting the mobile site on. The DNA here, we're going to go to the full site. And see again the display differences. And by the way, what you can tell here by this white screen is that the DNA screen is cooler uh, than the Nexus 4. And we found that in all of our comparisons video, videos with the Nexus 4. The Nexus 4 is a warm screen, for better or for worse. So here off the bat, you can see a lot more screen contents here on the DNA. Let's go into landscape and see what the story is there. And interestingly, in landscape, you see more on the Nexus 4 than you do on the DNA. But of course, you can probably tweak the zoom settings on either of these devices to get a desired effect. So let's move down on the page. Nice and smooth there. Some mispresses are always, uh, always fun. A little bit of white there. All right, let's zoom in on this area and see which clears up text faster. Having problems here on the Nexus 4. One, two, three. Um... Actually, the DNA was a little bit slower in that case. So it seems that, generally speaking, the Nexus 4 is a little bit faster than the DNA in some cases. It's really a, a draw uh, in case of web browsing performance, and that kind of makes sense. They have the same processor, um, and then the DNA has more pixels to push, while the Nexus 4 has the, the Chrome browser, which shouldn't be the default browser. So about equal, we'll call it. Now let's take a look at YouTube.
All right, so we've got the same video at the top here. We're going to click on both. Now, something to note about the DNA in YouTube. The YouTube app in Android only does 720p video, so you're not going to see the full resolution. But what happens is that there's some pixel doubling happening uh, in YouTube on the DNA, which isn't bad. So you get a 720p picture stretched to more pixels. It really doesn't make a difference. Will you be the judge? So I'm going to click on this video, and it's going to play here. Get a little advertisement Hello. in. And, you know, it definitely does look better on the DNA. We get a, a slightly larger view, uh, but in terms of the colors, they, they look about the same here. Again, a little bit warmer on the Nexus 4. We're going to go back to the home screen and do some benchmark tests. By the way, guys, if you're wondering what this live wallpaper is, it's, it's a free live wallpaper. Super cool. It's called Light Grid, and you can customize the colors and the shapes. It's a lot of fun, and it really makes any high-quality display shine. Although, interestingly, it's having trouble a little bit on the DNA. It's a little bit slower, and it's definitely much smoother here on the Nexus 4. All right, let's run Quadrant. All right, we're going to run the benchmark and come back with the scores. And the DNA finished first, and let's see what the results say. So we've got 7,833 on the DNA, which smokes the Nexus 4 here. And these, these results around 4,700 in the 4,000s is what we've been seeing on the Nexus 4. But this is an impressive score here on the Droid DNA. Now let's run another benchmark, Geekbench 2. And uh, we'll be back with the scores. Okay, the results are in, and it looks like the Nexus 4 was a little bit faster in Geekbench uh, by about a hundred points or so. So in conclusion, the Nexus 4 is definitely a bit faster than the Droid DNA, which makes sense because the DNA has more pixels to push. That said, those pixels are beautiful. This screen is unbelievable. Uh, 440 PPI might be overkill, but when you're looking at pictures and looking at text on the screen, uh, it is just a wonder uh, to, to think about how they included so many pixels on this display. Uh, one thing to consider with the DNA, though, is in-hand comfort. It feels good in the hand because of the really high build quality from HTC, uh, but the screen is tall. Uh, so even if you have basketball player sized hands, you're going to have to take out your second hand just to turn the device on and off because that power button's all the way up at the top. With the Nexus 4, you get stock, unadulterated Android the way nature intended. That's something to consider, definitely for the power user uh, crowd more so than the DNA. Uh, and you also have to consider that the hardware on the Nexus 4 isn't as good as a DNA. It just feels a little cheaper in the hand. And of course, we have those touch responsiveness issues, which makes the screen feel numb on the Nexus 4. But the Nexus 4 has an awesome price at 300 bucks starting if you're buying it off contract. So both of these devices are really awesome. Uh, some advice to you is to wait for the DNA to, to come on more carriers, test it out at your local carrier store. You'll be able to get it at a subsidized price, presumably, and it'll bring the price around to where you can get the, the uh, Nexus 4, maybe even a little bit lower. Both of these devices deserve your consideration. If there's anything specific you want us to compare, drop us a comment, and if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. That's it for now.